Now, this is a watershed period for financial sector developments across the emerging market world. Emerging market countries are often deemed highly risky and are under enormous pressure to adopt more transparent standards of operation and governance. Well, at stake are these countries' links to the global financial system, their prospects for growth and ultimately their social and political stability. Change must be driven by the countries themselves, but there is a great deal that financial sector professionals in advanced market economies can do to help. And joining us to look at those challenges in more detail and crucially how financial sector professionals can get involved is J. Andrew Spindler, President and CEO of the Financial Services Volunteer Corps. Hello, Andy. Thank you for, for joining us over there in New York, I believe. Hello, and it's a real pleasure to be with you both and to be part of the Cybos conference this year. Really well, happy to be with you. It is good to have you here, beamed uh, triumphantly on our huge <laughs> wall here in a, a little Crawley. Uh, if I can start by asking, what does the Financial Services Volunteer Corps do, and, uh, and how did it get started? Uh, the Financial Services Volunteer Corps is a not-for-profit organization that works to help strengthen uh, financial sectors uh, in emerging market and developing countries so that they can support healthy market economies. And we work basically in response to requests from reformers in these countries that are encountering bottleneck problems that have to be solved if they are to press forward. And th the way we operate is by asking leading experts uh, in financial services uh, and the support areas for financial services um, to go on a pro bono basis and to volunteer their time to share their experience and knowledge uh, to work with these reformers, to solve the problems, and ultimately to help make the world a better place. We were founded at U.S. Presidential Initiative back in 1990 when uh, communism was collapsing across Eastern Europe and uh, the former Soviet Union. And our initial work focused in that area. Uh, over the intervening 30 years, we have now expanded uh, to work in more than 60 emerging market and developing countries. We've sent more than 10,000 volunteer experts uh, on missions over this period. Mm. And, and Andy, how have you seen its work evolve in the years of its existence? And give us an idea about some of the important areas of work that are happening today. When, in some ways, the work has stayed very much the same, but yet it's also quite different. When we began working in Eastern Europe and in Russia in the early 1990s, institutions, market-based institutions, simply didn't exist. So much of our effort was focused on building uh, uh, market-oriented central banks, uh, uh, commercial banking sectors that could extend credit on an arm's length basis instead of engage in directed lending, and to set up capital markets. These, these were new institutions. What we're doing now in countries is basically strengthening these institutions because in almost every emerging market country now in 2021, they exist, but they're often very weak. So we're doing a lot of capacity building work. Beyond that, there are certain areas of work that have become critically important. Uh, and today we're seeing uh, those areas as including uh, financial inclusion expanding uh, uh, access to finance for vast numbers of unbanked and underbanked people in countries across the emerging market world, St strengthening access to finance for small and medium-sized enterprises or SMEs, because they're the engines of economic growth in nearly every one of these countries. Uh, we have a lot of requests to help strengthen the connectedness of uh, financial sectors in emerging market countries uh, to the global financial system and the rest of the world. And that often entails uh, a lot of help to help these countries meet international standards. And we're seeing a lot of requests to help uh, 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 identify and adopt new financial technologies uh, that are appropriate for helping to address and solve uh, these and other problems. You mentioned connectedness there, Andy. This is almost a silly question, considering the world we live in. We're all so connected online all the time. But geographically speaking, where, where is it you work? 
Well, the, the work uh, today, Johnny, has expanded tremendously beyond uh, Eastern Europe and the former Soviet Union. And uh, today, much of our work is centered in sub-Saharan Africa. We're also working uh, all across North Africa, the Middle East, Central Asia is an important focus of work today, Southeastern Europe, uh, and we're beginning to expand our work in Latin America and Central America. And that's becoming a new focus uh, of our efforts going forward. Right, but what are the preconditions that need to be met if an emerging market country is going to succeed at building a safer and more efficient financial sector? Well, one of the things we've learned over the years is that um, the effort has to be led from the country itself. Um, we may think that we know what's best for a particular emerging market country or developing country, but if there aren't reformers there willing to take the lead and to uh, 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 run the process, it usually will fail. So we want to see uh, uh, reformers in the countries that we can support uh, who are willing to take ownership of this process. Second, there has to be the political will in a country to do it. Uh, we've, we've found that often that a, a key person to look at is the governor or chairman or chairwoman of a central bank. Um, if that person uh, doesn't provide the political will and have it up from above themselves, uh, then there are probably going to be problems. But if there is political will and there's a local ref uh, reformer or group of reformers willing to take charge, then uh, the chances of success go way up. And the third ingredient I would cite is access to international expertise. Um, while the problems in each country may seem unique, uh, they're often very similar to problems that uh, in uh, advanced economies, financial sectors, we've already encountered and addressed. And in other emerging market countries that might be five or 10 years uh, further along the path, they've addressed. So if we can bring in international expertise to help address the problems and to help uh, a particular country meet uh, uh, international standards, that's a big boost to the efforts. And that's where FSVC's work becomes so important. Uh, we're bringing in such international expertise and we're always looking for financial sector professionals who want to be part of this effort and who are willing to contribute some of their time, their experience, their knowledge uh, to engage in this important work. Well, we're very glad that you contributed some of your special time and knowledge with us here on Cybos TV, Andy. Uh, you're clearly a man who's needed all over the world right now, so we wouldn't want to take up too much of that time. But thank you very much for joining us here on Cybos. That's Andrew Spindler, President and CEO of the Financial Services Volunteer Corps.